Our guest today is paranormal author Robert Harold. Welcome, Robert. <laughs> Delighted to be here. Yes. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, read your bio and the um, blurb from the first book of your series, The Idola Project. And you can tell us a, a little bit about uh, the name of that. So here we go. <laughs> Uh, yeah. The supernatural always had the allure of forbidden fruit ever since my mother refused to allow me as a boy to watch creature features on late night TV. This is Robert talking now. As a child, <laughs> fresh snow provided the opportunity to walk out onto neighbor's lawns halfway and make paw prints with my fingers, you nasty boy. <laughs> as far <laughs> as I could stretch. You, you made paw prints with your fingers as far as you could stretch. I would retrace the paw and boot prints, then fetch the neighbor's kids and point out that someone turned into a werewolf, werewolf on this lawn, but the kids were skeptical. <laughs> so uh, continuing, I have pursued many interests over the years, but the supernatural always called to me. You could say I was haunted. I love that. Finally, following the siren's call, I began writing the Idola Project series about 19th century ghost hunters who become ensnared in deadly investigations of the supernatural. There are three novels so far in this series, the Idola, the Idola Project, Moonlight Becomes You, and Totem of Terror. So ultimately, ultimately, I hope my work gives you the creeps, and I mean that in the best possible way. What a great bio, Robert. <laughs> so follow that up with, <clears throat> excuse me, the book blurb for the first novel in the Idola Project series, a gothic version of the X-Files and Supernatural. The Idola Project is a 19th century team of ghost hunters who become ensnared in a deadly investigation of a haunted house. They are a psychology professor, his assistant, an African-American physicist, a young sideshow medium, and a traumatized Civil War veteran, each possessing unique strengths and weaknesses. Will any of them survive? The uh, entire Idola Project series won first place in the 2022 Paranormal Romance Guild's Reviewer's Choice Awards. Other awards earned by this title are winner of the 2020 Ready, Reader Ready Award, second place 2019 PRG's Reviewer's Choice Awards, and the finalist in the Chanticleer International Book Awards. That's amazing. Kudos to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That is really wonderful. So um, did you want to tell us, uh, it's the series is the Idola Project. And did you want to tell us about uh, the word Idola? Well, Idola is uh, unf unfamiliar to many people, but it's actually a Greek word for ghosts. And so given these are ghost hunters who get in, involved in all kinds of supernatural investigations. I thought it would be a, a fun title for the series. And it's also the title of the first book. Oh, that is so great. I love it. The Greek word for ghost. And um, I want to share with you now, we've started this tradition from the, the first author that came on, one of her loves was coffee. So I thought, oh, I'll show her my spooky mug. And we've just continued it. <laughs> Me and whoever guessed, meaning we, me and whoever guest is on. So since you live in Seattle, Robert, you are going to love this. Voodoo, oh, voodoo donut voodoo. with the love hole it. in the middle. And uh, yeah, we stopped for some donuts. I got the mug. I'm just loving it. So yeah. They have a-, a From Portland, one Oregon. Of their, that's right. One of their uh, things that they offer if you go in there is you can buy, it's like, four or five dozen donuts and they uh provide it in a coffin and you can oh. take it out <laughs> we went down there it. as a school trip i was a i was a teacher for many years and uh we met we took the train down from seattle where i live and uh here here are these kids coming into the train station with a coffin it oh was, my god it was pretty funny. that's hysterical i love it so you have one too today a uh, a cup, a mug. 
Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Um, I actually <laughs> went the goblet route and uh, I, I have uh, diet ginger ale. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was going to yes. get. I was going to get spicy tomato juice, and uh, mm. but I didn't think anyone could see it as blood. But, right. Uh, oh, that would have been great. <laughs> That's okay. That uh, that mug kind of reminds me of Skeletor in a way. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> um, and I love your photo of Bella Lugosi behind you as Dracula. Oh, uh, right. There he is. Black and white. Loving it. So I have my kind of haven, and you have your haven. You know, indeed, it helps us write, right? <laughs> indeed, I've got a, a layer down here. We've just recently yes. inherited my um, my mom's dog, who is pretty high strung, and hopefully oh. you can't hear him barking in the background. Um, oh. And so, as a consequence, I've moved upstairs to the kitchen table lightly because he's much calmer when I'm around. He's, oh, uh, okay. He <laughs> okay. You but this him. is my this is my haunt. Uh, and yeah. uh, and eventually I'll be back down here. Oh, that's nice. So, um, well, now that we've introduced you and your work, I'm going to start with the first question. What is it about the paranormal realm that has inspired you to write in that genre? Well, um, I, I think it's a, a really a delightful playground um, yes. in in which to to write, and there's many aspects of it. I, I think going back to a kid again, um, as mentioned in my bio, I think it was a way to conquer fears. And even I think as adults, we we are facing things, and it's almost akin to roller coasters. We we attack. Oh yeah. You know we we have to overcome something in order to put ourselves in this crazy right. situation. And Stephen King once mentioned that he thought that we create horrors to help us deal with the real ones. And mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty insightful uh, concept. Yeah. I think that, you know, there's also the adrenaline rush, of course, of, yeah. of, of facing something spooky um, in, a, in a actual safe uh, setting from your armchair or wherever you might be reading and uh, or viewing yeah. a movie i never thought of it that way you're right cool um you know there there's also um ghosts and monsters have uh, a side to them which is attractive i think um on some level certainly to me as a kid um yeah in that uh yeah. they are expressing themselves in socially unacceptable ways and uh, <laughs> uh you know especially you know, like you know the werewolf which i wanted to be i mean freud yeah. would say that was pure pure id and uh you could say the same for dracula and um uh, uh the mummy and uh mm -hmm. you know, various other creatures in that um they're just going after what they want but there's also another side uh, you know, many cases, ghosts or monsters are, are pathetic and <laughs> they are trapped in the horror of their existence. And yeah. it gives the reader or the viewer, in the case of films, an opportunity to um, be empathetic. And uh, in that sense, I think it's, it's also a really interesting medium in that I've heard horror described once as, as being essentially conservative in that we we want to return to how things were before well there's that to be sure but i think there's another side to it uh, um given that there again the opportunity to be empathetic with something that is mm -hmm. somewhat i mean socially abhorrent it, it gives us an opportunity to grow and in that sense i think it can be um uh a catalyst for change and so again i think it just it's it's a wonderful um, medium for which to deal with and reflect all kinds of elements including social ills or problems my my idola project series is set in the 19th century but they're they're confronting all kinds of social problems that are still with us today sexism drug abuse um racism you know it goes on and on and uh my yeah. my current uh 
my uh, Friday the 13th stories that I'm writing with 12 other authors, um, making wow. 13, yeah. <laughs> published on Friday the 13th. Anyway. Oh, okay, perfect, uh, perfect, yeah. We're having a lot of fun with that. Anyway, yeah. they're, they're also, they're the strong women characters in, in the books and they're confronting <laughs> all kinds of different issues. And again, I, I just find this a, a fun playground. Yes. Oh, exactly. Exactly. And like you said, uh, when I read in the premise, um, one of in the Idola project, one of the characters is a Civil War veteran. I mean, we still have war going on. We still, like you said, I mean, you know, we still have these things going on. So indeed. Well, he's a. You know, it's interesting that one of the elements of him, you know, he's he's, he's often very socially inappropriate. Um, oh, okay. But he he is he's a racist, but he he. Um, is getting confronted with that over and over again and um and and he changes and so the course of the books are also chronicling his his growth as an individual so that's that's kind of a fun yeah. thing to to explore exactly yeah and i do that too in mind where the facing the the horror of the paranormal or a monster or something you know uh, that does not have your best interest at heart, shall we say. Um, you really have to dig down deep into your own courage and um, break through barriers that, um, as the character, of course, my main character as well, and the other ones, you know, like you said, it just really triggers everyone's personal phobias or, or hangups to, you're dealing with this right now, and you have to deal with it right now, you know, so. Right, you know, so that, okay, so my next one is, do you have a favorite paranormal movie or TV show uh, now or when you were growing up? Well, there's, <laughs> there's a ton. I know, there's so many, um, there's so many. And, <laughs> yeah. Well, probably yeah. one of my all-time favorites is a, um, a British film called, well, the American version is called Curse of the Demon, but the British version, which is 13 lucky minutes longer, um, is Night of the Demon. And it stars oh. Dana Andrews oh. and um, uh, um, forgotten her first name, someone Cummings, oh, Peggy Cummings, um, who starred in a great noir film, incidentally, called Gun Crazy. Or, and uh, anyway. What, uh, what year did it come out? I think it was 1954. Oh, okay. Uh, and it's about an egotistical uh, warlock who is uh, uh, killing anyone who doubts his authenticity as a as a witch. Oh, okay. Another. Okay. Uh, well, sh shall I mention other ones or? Oh, sure, sure, yeah. Like you're talking. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, um, the Wicker Man, the original one was oh. uh, I think one of the, oh. the finest horror, folk horror films ever ever made. And that came out in the early seventies. And I just, uh, you know, really dug it. Uh, I'll have to check that out too. You're giving me some new ones. Okay, a but classic, an older film, uh, it's called The Uninvited, which is oh. I think a nifty ghost thriller. Ray um, Milland. I think yeah, yeah. Uh, I grew and, up on uh, that movie. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Our favorite, oh, did you? Our favorite. Okay. My family's favorite movie is uh, The Uninvited in the black and white with Ray Milland, filmed oh. in the 40s. That's that, yeah. that's a great film. Yeah. Uh, I also really like the, the original Mummy. I think it uh, still holds up really well as a spooky atmospheric kind of thing. And of course, the original Wolfman was a fave as a kid. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, this, The Sixth Sense, I think, is a great mm -hmm. uh, I think it's probably the, the best thing that M. Night Shalmar has has done. Uh, yeah. Get Out uh, is is outstanding as, and oh, I, I think, the right. best thing yeah. that oh, um, Jordan Peele has done. A, a, a movie that I just saw recently that I loved was Midsummer, and his previous film was Hereditary. And um, that's someone named um, Avi... Aster, I believe, who wrote and directed those. And those are our nifty little guys. There's these, yeah. this trio of, of Chinese films called Chinese Ghost Story, one, two, and three. Oh. And oh, they're okay. outrageous, hard to find, but actually I, I did a search on, online and I found them on some, some streaming service, but uh, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're delightful. They're just 
just crazy wild action uh, and and funny and interesting and spooky plots. Great. Um, I'm going to have to watch this again. I always watch it to check that everything went okay. And I'm going to write these down. Now, I don't have to write down the uninvited. Not okay. at all. Um, Can fact, I give you two more? Uh, sure, two sure. More? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think um, The Witch, which came out a few years ago. Oh, and okay. also uh, Eyes of Fire, which actually came out in the 80s, are, okay. are, are spooky... Um, tales that take place in rural America or in the case of oh. the witch in colonial America and yeah. lots of fun that yeah. way. Ooh, eyes uh, oh, eyes of fire. The... What a great title. <laughs> it is really. Uh, oh, let the right yeah. one in from Sweden. That is that? awesome. Which one? Let the right. It's called let the right one in. Okay. And that's a really cool film. Um, yeah, you definitely want to let the right one in, not the wrong one. <laughs> I don't know the movie, but I'm sort of ass assuming. <laughs> well, hey, was that? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm I'm monopolizing the. No, the show. no, that's okay. No, these are great. We all have to look them up. But I need to ask you if sure. you have ever seen a ghost or experienced something strange in your life, in real life. Okay. All right. Well, no ghosts. I'm keeping my eyes and ears open. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, one of the... No ghosts, um, no ghosts that we know of. <laughs> but uh, probably the weirdest thing that I've ever experienced was uh, I was on a paper route early one morning and I saw a fiery ball about the size of my fist go across the sky. It was just When crazy. you were a kid? And, yeah, I was... Um, well, I assume and, you don't uh, have the paper route now. <laughs> No, I don't. Uh, probably junior high or, okay. or first couple of years of high school. And um, my brother was, we, we decided to, to help each other out. And we were both helping on the same routes. And then we would do both routes. And okay. he was on another street and we were going up a hill and he saw it as well. And when we came together, it was just like, what, what, did you see that? It was, it it was, was probably a... Sky? It was. I, I think it was probably either... Uh, a you know a piece of a satellite oh. or a um, a meteor of some sort uh, burning up in the atmosphere, but wow. that was pretty wild. That's crazy, and you de de definitely don't want to be where it was going to land, right? Yeah, no, no kidding. <laughs> well, that is strange. That's definitely strange. Um, so I'm I'm putting in a new question here, but this is the same one. But there's something that will follow up to this. Uh, what okay. is your piece of advice to aspiring writers, maybe someone who, trying to get published? Sure. Okay. Well, uh, as you're writing, I, I, I like to, and I strongly recommend coming up with an ending first. Um, oh, it good. gives you a direction where to go. And if you wish, yeah. you can change it, but it yeah. gives you, again, a focus and a direction which to go. And okay. I, I've, I've known a number of people who are really fine writers but they they get bogged down and and eventually don't finish because they just didn't know where they were going and so oh, if you, if you okay. just you just come up with a, a an ending it, i think it gives direction to your work and a, and a sense of, of of a target and i think that can really be helpful another thing uh, keep your inner critic in a locked box <laughs> and don't let him or it uh, or her out uh, until yeah. you finish, and uh, and then only if it's on good behavior. Yeah, um, good one. <laughs> it, it, use it when you know in the editing process, but don't let it destroy your work. You yes. Once yeah. once you've completed something, you have the right to feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. Uh, it's not an easy task, and um, and I think sometimes again, some people I've known who's really great they just get hung up in editing the same portion over and over and over again oh, and, yeah. and they don't yeah. progress so put it away or or again they get frustrated and 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 give up um yes put that yeah. that inner critic in a lockbox <laughs> and then exactly. keep writing keep writing uh yeah. also joining joining a writer's group with writers who are better than you <laughs> yeah. is a, yeah. is a good as a good venue, you know, and then when they learn from it, when you receive praise. Yeah, indeed. 
Well, it's funny because to me, one of the real horrifying monsters is the inner critic. <laughs> you know, indeed. And, yeah. uh, what you were saying earlier about you know watching horror and kind of from your armchair, but kind of letting it sort of get things out at least energetically. You know, I think that's what you're saying. There are times I I won't mention any politics or anything like that. But the world is an interesting place right now. That's all I'll say. And there were times I'm a huge Stranger Things fan. And uh -huh. I was telling my sister like a year ago or something like that. And, you know, the Netflix has all the seasons on. And I said, you know what? The other night I was really tired and something had major had happened that was very upsetting in America. And um, I said, I just watched Stranger Things. You know, I watched six episodes. I would rather watch that monster than deal with the world right now <laughs> so it was just sort of my you know my outlet so you know and then of course i come back to my stuff and everything but uh it does help out it does help oh, out. for sure watch somebody else run away from the monster for a while <laughs> <laughs> or, or do battle with it monster. yeah yeah, you know, yeah this is a new one and i wanted to add this because i don't think this gets spoken about enough and you don't have to mention names or anything like that. It's not about that. But what advice would you give writers or paranormal creators, podcasters, whatever it may be? But, you know, right now we're talking about writing. Uh, what would you what advice would you give to creators in the paranormal genre when it comes to naysayers? And it could be people like those, those who, who just don't believe in in uh, the supernatural or the paranormal um well actually or writing, those who, creative writing or, um there a lot of times there's people close to you around you or or this and that and it's like you get this okay. sort of negative oh yeah back. that's right but if you've never yeah, had I write that, horror. oh yeah. yeah 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 i write horror and oh, oh, oh i'm sorry <laughs> what's that and, uh, you know, yeah, people in social settings and say, what do you do? Well, I write supernatural mysteries, horror novels, and uh, oh, and I, I mean, I, 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 is, that, is that sort of what you're after? Is is that kind of a dynamic? Um, um, yeah, yeah, or people that were jealous of you or something like that, but maybe you've uh, always had positive reinforcement, and that's fabulous. You know, not everyone well, has, not everyone has. Indeed, well, I, I think, again, you should, you you know follow your own passion yeah and it, yeah. it's uh, it's again a um, marvelous playground for creativity and a, an opportunity to reflect on on serious issues in a fun and exciting maybe thrilling way yeah. um and yeah. it um you know i think there's been some some famous writers who have dealt with it. Shakespeare had ghosts and yeah. um and yeah. witches and uh, Hamlet, the opening of Hamlet. Ha oh yeah. And I, I think again it can who be goes a, there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A, a vehicle that is um you know again following your passion is I think one of the if, you yeah. know the best things in life if you yes. can fill those those elements of yourself and if it's something that is calling to you i i i say don't don't listen to the naysayers follow follow that that voice that is promoting and propelling you to um to play in this uh dark playground because i think it's yes. it, it has a lot of, you know it opportunities is, i like that it is it is a dark playground I mean, not horrifyingly dark. There's always, you know, we do have um, hero, her heroes and heroines that accomplish something because if, if it was just a slap down of everybody, everyone would stop reading, you know, if no one, right. you know, made any um, turnaround, you know. But um, I just want to share something because this kind of goes with what we were talking about. So Wes Craven, as we know, he did the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. So I saw him in an interview um, during one of the anniversaries or something like that. So he said after he made the first Nightmare on Elm Street movie and it came out, um, people that he knew that were friends of his, they didn't want him to be left around their children. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know it's like you know I you know I think I remember reading that he had uh, an uh, advanced degree in psychology oh uh, and yeah. then 
and David Cronenberg. Uh, I, Hell, you know, he Hell has Hellraiser, a, right? Hellraiser? Uh, no. no, that's Clive Barker. Um, Clive Barker, yeah. Also, um, some interesting films and books. But uh, Clive Barker, and I'm sorry, uh, uh, David Cronenberg, he yeah. did uh, uh, like Scanners and, oh, yes. you know, which is a yeah, which is a great another film to add. It's a yeah, great. Yeah, I remember order. scanners. And uh, he, I think his has he. I think he has an advanced degree in philosophy. So yeah. there, yeah. you can be yeah. quite an erudite, educated individual, and uh, yes. and be attracted to to this um, the genre. Because I mean, it goes deep. I mean, um, paranormal, supernatural horror. It's in all genre, in all um, formats, mediums. You know, writing, movies, TV, whatever. It's very emotional. There's a lot of emotion and a lot of, like I said, you know, characters having to, you know, latch on to their inner courage and, you know, break through barriers to fight the monster and this and that. So it does get psychological. I I feel, yeah. right? you know. Uh, so. Indeed. But I have to attack well, one. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I, I think, you know, there is, because you can, you can shock somebody in a film um, and, and, you know, with, you know, which is akin to saying boo unexpectedly to somebody yeah. and you can, you can create inexpensive and, and often rather poor horror films, but oh, yeah. it can also be something that is extraordinarily well done and it resonates with our, with our soul. And uh, yeah. those are the ones of films and books that I'm, I'm attracted to. So exactly. And uh, I think I attached so uh, immediately to Stranger Things because when I was the kid's age, um, excuse me, when I was like 13, me and uh, four other girls uh, created a mystery group. We didn't really do oh, cool. much. We had some seances, but we did do the two fingers. We lifted a, a girl up by two fingers each. You know, she's as light as a feather, stiff as a board. And uh, we turned <laughs> the off. We were in my friend's hallway. Her mom was gone. And um, yeah, two on each side, one at the head, one at the feet. And with two fingers, we went above our heads, above our heads. And wow. this was like a 13 year old girl that weighed whatever that weighs. And so then we said, what do we do now? And she came crashing down. We, we grabbed her, we grabbed her. <laughs> but we were all, close. it's almost like a sort of a, um, you know, um, hypnosis chant, and we lifted her up, and I, I've never did it again. But wow, that was—we scared ourselves. We scared ourselves. Wild. Yeah. So anyway, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm saying all these things today, but it's 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 very fun. One other thing I wanted to add: when I saw that um, Wes Craven interview, he said he got the idea for Freddy Krueger. Get this: he was in a second story. His bedroom was in a, the, on the second story of his home. He's like. I don't know, I think it was 12 or something. And a homeless guy was walking down their sidewalk and he looked out the window because I guess where he lived, I don't know where he lived, you know, residential. They didn't have too many homeless people walking by. So some guy in a shabby coat, whatever, was walking by. And then the guy turned around and made eye contact with him and looked up at him in the window and he got scared. And that was his idea for Freddy, Freddy Krueger. Isn't Ooh. that amazing? <laughs> so anyway. Wow. Thanks. Um, it's it just you never know where it's going to come from, right? <laughs> yeah, it's all grist yeah. for the mill, honestly. Yeah, and tapping into childhood uh, uh, fears and stuff is again a a, a great uh, well for for creativity. Yes, oh, definitely. So the final question is: um, tell us about your next project or a new book, what whatever you would like to tell us about. Okay, well. Uh, Oh, by the way, thank you for mentioning uh, my uh, recent win for the um, Paranormal Romance Guild's uh, yeah. Reviewer's yeah. Choice Award. That was... Uh, Congrats. Uh, really well, you were responsible and you put it in your bio because when things happen really fast, you're like, oh, I have to update my bio. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, I just found out about that a few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, well, I'm, I'm working on two things right now. Um, and my next uh, Friday the 13th story. And... Uh, I'm wearing, uh, this is the first oh. uh, of the of the stories, whichever way you go. Which and way? and the next uh, one is actually a sequel, which is 
uh, The Devil Sheds a Tear. And then uh, uh, I'm just finishing another one, which is called The, the Devil's Dregs. And uh, that one is, uh, these are, again, all set in Seattle in 2015. Oh. And I'm having a lot of fun with that and also referencing, you know, social problems in Seattle, but also local landmarks. And uh, I'm hoping uh, uh, it's a cracking good story and, to have, and yes. I'm having fun writing them. And then I'm also writing the next book in the Idola Project series. Um, this one is called A Lady in Pieces. And um, oh my goodness. it's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm about four chapters, three or four chapters into that. So, so you're, you're extremely anyway. good. You're well, it's I'm given that I've retired from teaching, and um, I'm just playing music and, and and writing as my two passions right now. So. Oh, well, that's great! That's great. So, hey, um, continued success to you, and I can't wait to read it. I I want to try to read everyone's stuff that I've been interviewing, so I just sort of have a backlog, but I want to keep on reading because it it inspires me to read other books while I'm writing my own book and not that I take anything from the other books of course not <laughs> of course because mm -hmm. I like to come up with my own ideas too but you know how something sure. just inspires you like a uh, like an emotion or an, an energy that you kind of sense from a scene or something like oh I could take that and I'm going to do this with it you know something like that so indeed I I find lots of inspiration and uh and in reading other books and I also read outside my genre in lots of ways because I, I, as I mentioned before I think it's it's all grist for the mill you you yeah. absorb things you can admire how someone handled a turn of the phrase or a, a situation and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. it can help yeah. inspire you in in all kinds of different ways especially if you're stuck and you think oh you know they, they figured something out I can do that too I like to yeah. play with different possibilities yeah. visually in my yeah. head and, um, oh, I'm very visual too. It, it never stops. It never stops. Indeed. So uh, I, in closing, Robert, I just want to tell you something. Now this goes back to uh, the film, The Uninvited. If anyone wants to look up The Uninvited starring Ray Milland in uh, 1943 or something, it's black and white. You just Google it, it'll come up. So we would see it all the time. And my parents, if we didn't want to go to bed or something like that. Now we were old, you know, we were like 12, 13. And they didn't say this to us when we were six years old or something. <laughs> but they would say, if you don't do X and X, Mary Meredith is going to come for you. And we were like, no. <laughs> so people will just, when they see the movie, they'll have to find out who Mary Meredith is. <laughs> but you know. <laughs> I, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yes. Um, my dad you know, there were a lot of spook us. Oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I grew up. So look at me now. Awesome. I was going to say it turned you into the wonderful yeah. person that you are. It worked out in a positive way. <laughs> Indeed. So anyway, I want to thank you for coming on to uh, Creativity and the Paranormal. And Kate, can't wait to uh, read your Friday the 13th books and the Idola Project books. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I had a spooktacular time. Oh, thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> that's a perfect line. I was going to say my little closing line, but that's better. I'm sorry, what did you say? Oh, thank you for inviting me. Oh, of course. And may everyone have uh, very positive paranormal experiences, whatever they may be. May they be magical. <laughs> All right. Okay, bye.